you know, it, it really disrupted my work. I mean, I, I'm a medical writer and I'm really busy right now and I couldn't work. I mean, I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think I couldn't, you know, and I had to make you know a huge list of phone calls. It was incredibly, I must've taken five years off my life. So I'd like to take a second now and invite Allison to the show. Allison, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey. Um, so we were talking last week when I got a frantic chat from you yeah. <laughs> while I was uh, catching up on email. And uh, you were saying, I've been hacked. What am I doing? And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, it's because you didn't put 2FA on easily, and which was not the case that we find yeah. out. So maybe you can talk about what it's like to experience as an individual getting hacked. Yeah, so, you know, I can say I, I've had some pretty significant um, health issues in my life and all kinds of, you know, emergency th things happen. And this was like up in my top three most stressful events of my life, much more stressful than I would ever have predicted. And what happened with me, so um, a couple of weeks prior, my email did get hacked. And to be fair, I did not have two-factor authentication on that account because I, it was not, not an account I use very often. So I had two-factor authentication on most of my things, but there were a few accounts that I just didn't use very often and just forgot to put it on. So that was the background. And then um, I was just, it was the evening, I was working and I got a text from my service provider saying, you know, somebody has uh, requested that your service be removed from TELUS and moved. And, you know, if this isn't you, please call. And I, I happen to know what porting out schemes are. So I knew what was happening. And I immediately Maybe you could talk about what, what is a porting out scheme. Yeah. So a porting out scheme is where somebody pretends to be you one way or another. Uh, in my case, they actually hacked into my uh, TELUS account, but they can do it in other ways. They can call the service provider and, you know, if they have enough background information on you, like your date of birth and your mother's maiden name or whatever they ask for. They claim to be you and they say, OK, I want to switch my account from TELUS to whatever other service provider. And in doing so, they take control of your phone number. So now they're getting all your calls, they're getting all your texts. So I got this text, I knew what was happening. Um, I called TELUS immediately with the phone number they gave me and I was on hold for half an hour. In that time, my phone got switched. It got switched to Bell. Well, I found out later, it got switched to Bell. And, and you're on hold uh, because of the COVID situation because the short staffed. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't think they have 24 hour, you know, they don't deal with this 24 hour anyway. Like I, this is something we can go into later, but you know, your phone is being used as the key to financial information with two factor authentication. And there is no 24 hour protection on your phone. So in fact, the reason this works so well is that all the different phone companies have different business hours. So what this hacker did is they moved my phone to Bell in the last five minutes before Bell closed. So when I got on the phone with TELUS, they couldn't switch my phone back because they have to call Bell, get permission, but Bell's closed for the day. So he had access to my phone until Bell opened the next day, which is 12 hours. Now, every account on which I had two-factor authentication, meaning I got a code to my cell phone, was now open. It was like, because they can bypass passwords that way. So they had free reign on my, well, PayPal was the key account. Obviously, they locked it. They went into. So what's going through your mind at that exact moment? I was... Freaking out. I mean, freaking out in like the really literal, you know, I'm starting, I'm screaming at people, I'm screaming at my husband, I'm screaming at my daughter. I knew, I knew from having read about this that people had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars and did not get their money back. It wasn't protected by whatever, you know, fraud, anti fraud, you know, insurance or whatever is on these accounts. So, I and every and so I just started calling. I calling my credit card, calling PayPal, calling the bank, and everybody has hour long waits, right? So I've got my I've called my I've, I've spoken to my husband, and he I think we had three different phones calling these different and just on hold on and it had to be me, right? They won't talk to anybody but me. So I've got different people kind of telling me when the hold is over, and I just I was I was freaking out so much I felt like my head was going to explode, like. Uh, you start to lose the ability to think straight, right? I'm, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember which accounts are linked to PayPal, you know, which bank accounts, which credit cards. And I couldn't, I have two different PayPal accounts and I couldn't even remember. So yep. I, I was just, you can't, even though I knew what was happening, I knew what had to be done. I could not think straight. My brain just went into overload. 
I'm screaming at my husband. Like later I had to apologize to him, you know, because, like, I'm sorry, I screamed at you. I know this wasn't your fault. I know you were trying to help me, but you know, thank God he was the one who thought about just, because when we called the bank, amazingly, the bank's like, well, you know, go into your branch tomorrow. We can close your account. Um, they're in my account now and they're draining it. So he at least thought to empty the account. Like, I didn't even think of that. You know, it's an How much was transferred out? So temporary. So he, the, the, um, the fraudster did two things. He tried to buy an iPhone on eBay for $2,000. That transaction went through. He also tried to buy a switch on some, I don't know, it wasn't eBay, it was another online service, which got blocked. And to this day, I don't actually know how these got blocked because we called PayPal and they were closed for the day. We just got voicemail. So it was really complicated calling, calling PayPal. Like we called right before they closed and they closed like seven or eight at night. And this happened at seven and the wait time was an hour and a half. So we knew that we wouldn't be able to speak to anybody, but we, it's, there's a complicated automated system that you can kind of go through and you need to kind of go through it over and over again to hear all the options. And I, I did at some point, I was able to flag that these were not authentic transactions, but I wasn't sure if this was going to anybody or if it was just gonna get looked at the next day. I'm not sure if that's why these two transactions got flagged or not, because I didn't talk to anybody at PayPal, but they did get flagged. The $640 one got reversed before it came out of my account. The $2,000 one, did not get reversed. It went through, it was deducted from my account, but then it, on my PayPal, it said that it was being recredited, but it took about four or five days to go through my bank account. And I like, I wasn't sure. I mean, during those four or five days, I was checking like every three hours. I was, I didn't really believe, you know, I was, I kept waiting to get the other shoe to drop and, you know, they weren't going to be able to get my money back. And, you know, that, so that was, I just spent, I mean, the first night I didn't sleep at all for those 12 hours where they had access to my account. I wasn't sleeping. I was, you know, I ended up tweeting about it to tell us into PayPal at 3 a.m. and actually got their attention that way. So if anyone's in this situation, tweeting seems to be the one way you can get their attention outside of business hours. But, you know, it, it really disrupted my work. I mean, I, I'm a medical writer and I'm really busy right now and I couldn't work. I mean, I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think. I couldn't, you know, and I had to make, you know, a huge list of phone calls. It was incredibly, I must have taken five years off my life. I mean, so let me ask you. So before yeah. before the hack happened, um, did you ever think in your mind this would happen to me? You know, yes and no, because I actually knew what porting out schemes were. And I read a really scary story. It's a farming family, I believe, in Saskatchewan who had it, who were victims of this scheme. And they got into their business account and drained it of three hundred thousand dollars. Now, this is a, yep. it's happened in December, I believe, 2019. And when I read that. It, first of all, I don't find the media as explaining this well. When I read that, I didn't, I even reading the article, I didn't understand what a porting out scheme was. So I looked it up. So I actually knew, you know, I don't think many people know what this is. So I knew what it was. And I thought, gee, that's scary. But I didn't have, really have any information on how to prevent it. And it didn't seem like it was super popular. So yes, it was in the back of my mind that it could happen, but no, I wasn't kind of living my life thinking, oh my God, this could happen to me. So, I mean, yeah, it was definitely a shock, but like I said, I knew immediately when I got that text, what was happening. So in your, in your, in your, now that you're very knowledgeable <laughs> about all this stuff, actually, actually on a little side note, when we spoke uh, yesterday, uh, you, you, you can reveal a little tidbit about what happened when he purchased on eBay. Oh, yeah. So so my pet theory is that this was a kid who, who Googled and sort of got some tips about how to do this. I don't think it was a professional. I could be wrong. Because what happens on eBay when you order something, the name and address to which the, the, in, the item is being delivered shows up on your PayPal account. So I have his name and address. Now, Oops. it's possible that this was spoofed and like they're saying, well, maybe it's not really him. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I have no idea. But he's also local to me, which I think that's a weird coincidence, you know, so I don't know what that means. Anyway, I've, I've sent it, you know, I've, I've done an online um, um, submission to the anti-fraud people and that, you know, I've given the name and address and I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with it, you know. Sounds like they, we they, send Guido. Like, well, call 911, which is ridiculous, you know, obviously I'm not going to call 911. <laughs> we got to send Guido. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, yeah, awesome. so I don't think he was very sophisticated unless, you know, there's some kind of complicated scam going on where the stuff gets shipped to him and they steal it from him. And I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. 
but that was pretty funny. <laughs> There was a, there was an article that came out that uh, in in the hacker news that there was over four hundred forty five million attacks since January against remote yeah. worker. It's yeah. off the wall. It's yeah. uh, I'm getting calls. Like I said, I got a ransomware call just before this this live chat, and uh, my, my phone is constantly going off the hook with, "What do I do?" Yeah, so, and there's really like with COVID nineteen and all these call centers being, you know, like really reduced I, they're really taking advantage of it they're oh yeah really taking oh yeah advantage. well they know right because the moment you leave the corporate firewall the safety of the corporate firewall and work from home and a lot of, com a lot of companies are actually using their personal computers for their employees and which don't have adequate security on it and their kids are using it maybe getting that infected and it's infecting the company i mean in my managed service i'm monitoring a couple of companies and I'm receiving so many daily false alarms because people are connecting to unrestricted Wi-Fi, or um, which is their personal Wi-Fi's, which is not the corporate network's firewall. Yeah. Fire uh, Wi-Fi. So I'm getting all these alerts that these people are connecting to Starbucks, and like, oh my God, I'm scared. So. Yeah. Well, you know, my husband and I work from home anyway, so we have a lockdown. You know, we have the firewall, we have all that stuff, and I still yeah. got. You know, it's they still got through. I mean. You know, I think as a, you know, I'm, I'm not a techie. I'm not super technically knowledge. I have, I, I, I know probably more than the average 50 year old woman, um, right. but I rely on my husband and my brother a lot who are more tech. And I, and I think I don't know what I don't know, but I think I know more than average. And, you know, and I got, you know, I got hacked in the worst possible way. I think it can happen to everybody. I think for the regular person, it's virtually impossible to keep up with this. You know, you really yeah, you need to consult an expert. You need to, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, you know, like, I mean, I think your book is great. It's a great first step, but I mean, six months yep. from now, yep. there'll be something that's else. Why I, that's why I'm trying to, um, you know, there was a couple of, a couple of ideas that I had. One was the, uh, was obviously the course, but then people would say, I don't have time to watch this stuff. I want to go watch Bachelorette. <laughs> uh, or I can write a distilled version of the book and people will get it. And probably 90% of them won't even get past the first chapter. Yeah. yeah this will never happen to me. I want to go back and watch Lost. And yeah. then uh, I, I had an I had an idea for an app that was coming up, but that fell through because of some scams that happened with it from other investors on the other side. Um, and now I'm thinking about maybe doing the live show where people will be able to call in or email in and get their questions answered live. So they'll have me for an hour kind of thing. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, but it is very, very, it's even difficult for us cybersecurity folks to keep up the date as well. Yeah. There's just so much attacks and scams coming out. But so, I really feel, I mean, personally, as a consumer now who's been hacked, I really feel like the telecommunications companies and the financial companies have to step up more. You know, they, they put a lot of effort into saying, we have your security in mind. And oh, I yeah. I mean, you know, the fact that our, like I said, our phones are, are, are becoming a key to our financial information with two-factor authentication. And the fact that there isn't 24-7 fraud protection, like that I could call, tell us and tell them this is happening and they couldn't do anything for 12 hours. That doesn't, right. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, yeah. And PayPal yeah. too. PayPal, you cannot. There is no twenty four seven. They have business hours. So if you're if you're, you know, if you're hacked after business hours, they have you know they have yeah. eight yeah. hours to take your money. Like that's a long time. I really really appreciate your time coming on to to uh, share your experience with us. Oh my pleasure. So I just want to leave you with one piece of advice for your listeners, which is call your service provider, your telephone service provider, and ask them to put on. They use different names. It can be called port security or port blocking. It's possible the person you talk to won't even have heard of it, like because it's a new thing, but they all offer it. And what that means is they have to go through extra security measures before they transfer your account. Some it depends on the service provider. Some people you have to go into the into the, the actual office and sign a paper. Some just you know call you and do extra, but it's just an extra layer to make sure this doesn't happen. They can't put it on automatically because they're it, by CRTC rules, CRTC. they have to make it easy to change service providers, but you can ask for it and you really should. You really, really should. So that's my that that's my takeaway lesson from this experience. That's very, very valuable. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it. Okay, well, my pleasure. Coming on. Okay. Have a good one. Talk to you later. You too. All right. Bye bye.